Hello uh, and welcome to this short presentation uh, on the Games and Interactive Design FDA course. Uh, my name's Echo Esifal. Uh, I am the program leader for Games and Interactive uh, Design FDA. And this presentation uh, is aimed to give you uh, a short overview uh, of what the course is about. Um, perhaps maybe you've in expressed interest uh, in doing this course. Uh, and this presentation uh, aims to really give you uh, a short overview of what the FDA Games and Interactive course uh, is about. So, uh, in a nutshell, the course is built around uh, both theoretical uh, and practi practical aspects of interactive design and will develop your skills in contemporary industry practice and technology. So you might be coming from a school or you might be uh, somebody that perhaps maybe has had an interest uh, in games and interactive, uh, or you might actually not have anything at all to do with games and interactive, uh, but perhaps may maybe want to have a look and see what this course is about and whether it's suitable for you. Um, whatever your background or experience actually is, uh, this course really is about anybody um, that wants to uh, develop a career in the games and interactive industry. So by game, I mean developing games for uh, PC, developing games for consoles, uh, developing games for mobiles, and developing games for web as well. Uh, the course mainly focuses on uh, concepts and design uh, for games and interactive design. And... Uh, upskill students in, of course, the practical and theoretical uh, sort of elements uh, of this space. Now, really, the technical and artistic use of digital interactive technologies to create games and mobile apps um, has been around for a while now. Um, and what we do is um, we've built onto this and come up with a course that enables students to uh, exactly do that uh, and, of course, develop their skills uh, sort of further within that. So what we aim to do is to allow students to develop their software skills for designing and building interactive content on multiple platforms, uh, as mentioned before. Uh, so whether this be for uh, PC, uh, consoles, uh, mobiles, uh, and also web. Now, some people have um, an interest in developing you know, applications for mobiles um, or touch tablets. And this course allows you to be able to do that. Uh, as well, but kind of almost focused around games. Um, but some students that, you know, perhaps want to develop mobile apps uh, with graphical uh, elements um, are also welcomed. And we've had students in the past who have actually done uh, exactly that. So there will be some computer coding, uh, which obviously providing the technical foundation for dynamic uh, and artistic development. So this course is mainly focused around game concepts and designs, but there will be an opportunity for students to take those uh, designs and make them into functionable products, i.e. through obviously mobile apps and web uh, for consoles and PCs, as mentioned before. Um, so, you know, there is a, a coding element to this. So if you want to make your assets functional, uh, you will be able to actually do that uh, on this course. It's not a, a scripting program or it's not a, a computer uh, programming course, uh, but there are some um, coding elements in here um, for students in order to make their assets uh, functional. So you will have the opportunity to specialize in games design or app and web development as you progress through the course. Now, some students come with an idea of exactly what they want to do, whether they want to be a modeler, whether they want to be uh, a texture artist, uh, whether, whether they want to be an animator, or they want to be a, a, concept, art, uh, a concept designer, um, or even a sound artist for games or environmental creation, whatever your uh, areas of focus or interest uh, actually is, um, you'll be able to find something uh, on the course which uh, suits your particular uh, area of interest. Um, now, some students focus on one area, others, you know, perhaps maybe want to focus on two areas and others want to be just generalist and be able to actually study the full suite of uh, skills uh, that we provide uh, on the course. And that's absolutely fine. Uh, you can specialize in one area or you can be a generalist 
and of course uh, explore different areas if you are interested. Now we have a range of um, high-end equipment and resources for students to be able to do this on. So we have a range of iMac computers uh, for both design and development and also some PCs, uh, some i9s uh, with some high-end graphics uh, for of course design and development as well. And we also have uh, studio space uh, for students to be able to uh, conduct things like virtual production and using VR technologies uh, etc as well as part of that. So we're very well resourced uh, with regards to equipment uh, for making uh, games and of course developing uh, apps as well uh, for that. So I'm just going to move forward now and talk a little bit about uh, the modules that we cover uh, so I'm just going to talk through the uh, structure of a foundation degree course and give you an overview of the different levels, really. So the first year of the course is at level four. Uh, the second year is level five. And to almost kind of explain how the different uh, sort of level works in an educational uh, sort of setting. So level two is, if you like, your GCSE level. Uh, level three is more A-levels or BTEC qualification. And then, of course, level four is the first year of the degree course. Level five is the second year. And then, of course, level six um, is, of course, when you go up to, off to Plymouth University uh, to top up to your full uh, honours. Uh, the very first module that you will uh, sort of study, or at least one of the very first modules you study in the first year, uh, is digital culture. Now, digital culture really aims to introduce students to the theoretical frameworks that underpin digital culture. Um, you will investigate aspects of visual culture and the historical developments that inform the production of interactive design. So really you investigate uh, some of the his historical context uh, that has enabled um, digital technologies, especially in games and interactive, uh, to be what it is today. So you might want to look at uh, previous uh, innovations or current innovations uh, or different artists uh, some of the debates surrounding that and how that has enabled uh, this space to be what it is uh, uh, today. Uh, you will also discuss a range of imagery, text and forms in order to illustrate theoretical areas of structure, style, representation and audience through lectures, seminars uh, and exercises. So you might look at, you know, things like, you know, different games, uh, different artists uh, and what they've created. Um, and sort of decoding that and almost analysing that and looking at ways in which, you know, um, media, uh, visual and forms are used to inform ideas uh, within a wider context. And in this case, of course, games and interactive uh, design. Now, digital skills is the module which allows uh, students to kind of almost upskill uh, in terms of gaining the fundamentals. Uh, with regards to games and interactive design. So some of you might be coming from school uh, or you might have had uh, some experience uh, outside of this, either through playing games or designing some small 3D assets in a 3D software or even doing some 2D work, 2D work in Photoshop or something like that. But the module really uh, is, you know, aimed at students that, you know, perhaps maybe haven't quite got the fundamentals of uh, design and perhaps maybe even development um, and also to allow students that are coming in with some skills uh, to be able to brush up those skills or fill in some gaps in the knowledge with regards to uh, the basic principles and fundamentals of uh, digital creative uh, sort of design. But if you're coming in with no understanding or no skills, please don't worry, we all start at the very same line um, and try and get students to sort of upskill and get uh, themselves aware with the basic principles of, of design uh, concepts and development with regards to games and interactive. Um, developing research and practice is also one of the um, more theoretical uh, modules uh, on the course and the module really is designed to enable students to demonstrate that they have all the qualities and transferable skills including practical, technical and research skills necessary for relevant employment and creative practice. It will also encourage uh, the exercise of responsibility and decision making including the ability to relate their creative practice to underlying theory 
and principles. So with regards to research, everything you do on a course uh, will require some form of research and the ability to actually conduct good research using you know, good resources and reputable sources in order to underpin some of your practical skills is really, really important. And developing research and practice uh, aims to do that. Um, UX design is uh, a module where students are introduced to the aspects of uh, user experience and how uh, users and audiences uh, interact with uh, interactive products. So if you are scrolling through your phone or browsing the web or pr um, playing a game, um, there is a user interface that you interact with and the ability to be able to navigate through that um, environment uh, all comes down to uh, user interface and the user experience. Is the user experience poor or is the user experience frustrating or is the user experience not uh, very comprehensive and understanding for the user. The user has to be able to navigate through a particular project uh, with minimal hassle. Now, how do you actually really do that? By understanding user psychology uh, and user theory. And UX, UX design really aims to uh, sort of cover some of those principles and why we make the decisions that we make when it comes to actually uh, interacting with a uh, user interface. So you would do some research within user design, uh, user psychology, and how we interact with interactive products. Um, and you'll be able to come up with your own UX design, which you would then link to one of your practical modules, uh, in this case, games and interactive development. Now, the last two modules, the first one, design and pitching concepts, so Design and Pitching Concepts is uh, the module where you come up with uh, the game concept for the first year um, through many a game design document. So if there's a game you've always wanted to create uh, or you have an idea for a game, uh, this is where you kind of make it happen. Um, so students come up with concepts for their game, uh, develop their storylines, uh, come up with prototypes. And then the students uh, pitch those ideas and those concepts to a panel, usually uh, members of staff and also externals, where then we give you some um, constructive criticisms, which you then use to refine your ideas further. And then after that, you use those ideas um, into games or interactive development module. Now, this module uh, takes your concepts, your prototypes, your ideas, and make them into functional products, so whether it be a game, uh, a web game, a mobile game, or an app. So you take your ideas from your design and pitching concepts and you bring it into a game engine or you put it into uh, Xcode and you code your particular app or you code your game or you texture or you animate and bring the project together. So a functional product is what we aim to produce at the end of games or interactive development, taking all your concepts, all your prototypes from your design and pitching concepts and create, create a functional artifact from that. So I'm just gonna talk through uh, the level five part of the course. Uh, and the level five, of course, is the second year of the games and interactive uh, design course. And you will start off with interactive narratives. Now, interactive narratives is a module where students come up with their own stories um, and develop their own uh, narratives uh, for a game uh, which is usually based around some form of decision so you would develop your narrative skills look at narrative theory uh, and how that works within games and interactive design so we've had students in the past create uh, point and click games or decision making games um, and of course use some of the theory that you've learned in terms of interactive narrative development uh, as part of a game uh, so this would be done in either unity uh, or unreal where you will have a functional uh, interactive narrative game uh, at the end. Um, Client-based brief really centers around uh, students working with an external, usually uh, outside of the college. Um, and of course, you know, finding a client which is perhaps maybe based on your own interest or a need within the industry. So in the past, we've got students to go out and find work uh, by working with various industries. Uh, so for example, some of the students are working with uh, the NHS Digital Horizons, which is the NHS uh, digital team who actually reside in the same new high-tech digital skills building that you'll be working in. So they're working with them 
on uh, developing some VR projects, coming up with animations. Um, so for example, they're developing um, diff different uh, body parts, which explains the different types of uh, processes that happens within the body. Um, and the aim of this really is to develop some uh, projects for them, uh, for their clinicians, so that they can use in a healthcare setting for educational uh, purposes. We've had students work with uh, the elderly by coming up with prototypes for, for Zimmer frames. We've had students work with architectural visualization companies. Um, the scope is kind of quite wide and really depends on the student's interest and the type of client they actually want to work for. Um, professional practice, um, if you like, is sort of slightly linked with client-based brief in a sense that it aims to uh, get students to develop the uh, professional skills uh, with regards to uh, employment, uh, careers, and also uh, developing um, materials, professional materials, which aims uh, to develop them further if they're going into uh, industry, setting up as a freelance or uh, working for uh, a company. So students in the past, you know, perhaps maybe want to go into, uh, you know, work for a company. Um, what are the, some of the processes that goes through that? Coming up with a good CV, a good website, uh, maybe some social media presence, some good promotional materials. Uh, that enables them to obviously uh, do that. Some students might want to set up as a freelance and what are some of the uh, regulations uh, around that? Uh, what are some of the working practices that surround perhaps maybe working as a freelance? Um, all of that gets covered uh, within um, professional practice. Now, some people perhaps maybe want to progress on to higher learning, maybe progress on to Plymouth University, uh, and we help you through that process through professional practice as well, helping you choose the right course for you to progress on to. Uh, some of the uh, core modules that perhaps maybe you want to add to your, your already uh, gained foundation degree and where to actually progress uh, sort of forward with higher learning, and all of that gets covered in uh, professional practice. Uh, sound production is a module where you come up with sounds and music for your media projects uh, or your games and interactive projects. So, for example, we get students to study things like microphone theory, uh, sound design theory, and how that can be used within games and interactive uh, design. So we usually tend to link that with interactive narratives. Uh, where students come up with their own sound design and soundtracks. Uh, they go out, record some Foley sounds, use them as sound effects uh, for their interactive narrative projects. It's a really, really fun module, um, a little bit outside what we mostly do, but we feel the sound is really key and important with regards to any media project, in this case, games and interactive uh, design, and students really engage with that uh, and kind of almost see a different aspect uh, of coming up with you know, uh, sounds for the games uh, and interactive uh, sort of project. Now, uh, negotiated research is, you know, one of the more theoretical aspects of the course again, and really uh, it allows students to have the opportunity to investigate visual and digital culture, the breadth developments and debates that inform the production of interactive design. Um, you basically look at a range of imagery, texts, form, um, which will then will be, will be utilised to illustrate theoretical and areas of structure, style, representation and audience. So really the aim of the negotiated research sessions is to allow students to develop uh, a practical work in an informed and holistic manner. In addition to developing technical and aesthetic skills, uh, the module aims to help students to engage critically and analytically with issues that affect current aspects of digital culture, network media, cyber culture, design, and to also inform your practice uh, and research. So it's a very uh, wide module and looks at all these other areas uh, in order to allow students to critically engage in uh, issues surrounding the games and interactive um, and some of the uh, other points that perhaps maybe students might want to look at uh, with regards to maybe uh, how games have an effect on uh, human psychology, how games can be used in very productive ways to help uh, people learn, and all the other uh, issues surrounding the games and interactive uh, design. Um, advanced digital skills 
is perhaps maybe uh, linked a little bit with negotiated research in a sense that it allows students to research an area of interest uh, which mainly focuses around current or emerging technologies so there might be an area that uh, is current at the moment that people are developing or actively looking into and perhaps maybe set to be the future of something which you might obviously want to look at and see how you can integrate that uh, within your practice or it also might be uh, an emerging technology that maybe you have discovered or uh, are looking into and perhaps maybe want to do some more research into that and see how you can practice with that and put that within um, your current practice. Now we've had students in the past look at for example uh, hardware and software and how they come together to create art. So we've had students use things like uh, Arduino boards uh, to basically create you know functionable products which integrates with software to create uh, digital art. Uh, we've had students in the past um, basically take some hardware, use some VR technologies, integrate the two together, bring that into a game engine and develop uh, a functional product from that as well. So really, it's almost like a free reign to look into an area of interest or an area that is currently emerging that you want to look into further as well. Um, so next part of this is I want to look at uh, some of the example of students' work um, and sort of look at you know the ways in which students who have come onto the course and what they've actually developed. So this is an example uh, of a student work um, which I want to show you. This is uh, a particular student that came onto the course with no prior experience uh, with regards to um, asset development uh, for games and interactive. Um, this student here um, really wanted to develop their skills and realistic asset creation. Uh, they had no prior experience. They had played games. They played a lot of games, but had no experience with regards to uh, creating models uh, for different 3D uh, sort of scenarios. And this student's uh, focus in the first year was to uh, upskill themselves on the basics of 3D uh, and use some of the skills learned to create realistic 3D assets. And, and as you can see, they went on to uh, create a range of uh, different assets uh, for different scenarios. So their main focus was realis realism uh, in uh, 3D. So you can see they have uh, some assets for games, um, some product design there, uh, and some realistic uh, sort of life, real life rendering uh, of assets using um, basic 3D uh, sort of techniques as well as some intermediate ones as well and I think my main um, aim of this really is to sort of encourage those that perhaps maybe might feel that um, they might not have the necessary skills or are not uh, sort of up to uh, sort of creating these assets uh, in terms of their practical skills uh, it's just to encourage you and say everything you pretty much uh, want to learn with regards to creating assets for games uh, for products uh, or even uh, being able to uh, come up with ideas for creating assets, um, you will get to learn that on the course. And for those that also do have some experience, you'll be able to, of course, further build on that uh, and progress and thrive on the course. So this was just an example, really, uh, to kind of show you an example of a student's work, where they started from uh, and where they were at the end of the first year. Uh, their main focus was developing realistic games. Um, so this particular student here wanted to create uh, a triple A type level games. And um, this was at the end of the second year of the course where he came up with a virtual reality uh, game where you go through uh, almost uh, a post-apocalyptic world uh, through this spacecraft um, and actually go through the different parts uh, of the spacecraft uh, to complete missions. Um, and this is all done within uh, Unreal Engine. Uh, all the assets were developed, all the post-processing, all the texturing, all the animation uh, was done by this particular student. And this is a better example uh, of the exterior and interior of uh, this particular project here. Um, an overview of some of the projects and some of the work that this particular student uh, actually did. Um, now, of course, using this uh, form of presentation, I can't actually show you everything or get you to actually experience this. Um, but if we come up, we come, we come 
through lockdown and you know we are operating as normal and you want to come in and perhaps maybe view some of these for yourselves um, you can do that I will try and make arrangements for that uh, the last thing I want to uh, sort of touch on is this particular student's work um, and this particular student produced this VR experience uh, at the first year of the course and they use a range of techniques in terms of modeling animation texturing um, and tested some of the virtual reality equipment that we have uh, to kind of produce almost like a horror uh, immersive game uh, and this was done at the, f uh, at the beginning of the first year and I'm going to try and play this and hopefully it works so you can see so all the modeling as I said before the texturing all the assets uh, were all done uh, by this particular student and as you can see it goes through um, the game by getting the particular audience to put on a VR headset uh, and interact uh, within the environment. Of course, playing it through a video uh, does not give you the full experience, but you can see uh, exactly what it might feel like um, actually playing through this game. Um, so this, you know, player has a VR headset on, uh, and you go around and play through the level. There are a few surprises that creep up. Uh, as you go through it but this was just a testing for uh, this particular student using the VR headset uh, going through uh, the level. As I said if anybody wants to experience this um, sort of in person if we come um, through this lockdown and you want to come in perhaps maybe and experience some of this for yourself just get in contact with some of the tutors or if you want to see more student work please let me know uh, and I'll be more than happy uh, to organize that for you. Okay, so that is pretty much uh, the end of this presentation. Like I said, it's, it's a little bit short, um, but hopefully gives you some overview, gives you some understanding, uh, some ideas as to what the FDA Games and Interactive Design course is about. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, you can contact myself which is echo.sfo at southdevon.ac.uk or you can get hold of some of my uh, colleagues uh, Lynn Andrews which is HE lead uh, or you can obviously contact uh, Lewis, John uh, or uh, Antenna Weaver uh, but if you can direct any questions to myself or Lynn um, we'll, we'll be more than happy uh, to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much uh, for listening to this short presentation I hope it's given you some idea of the Games and Interactive course and hopefully get to see you uh, in September um, if we're, we, this lockdown is over and you know we'll be more than happy uh, of course uh, to have you uh, on the course. So hopefully this has given you some idea. Thank you very much for listening to me. If you have any questions, like I said, uh, send us an email uh, and we'll be more than happy to help you. Okay, thank you.